Hello everybody, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day, a blessed day. And I hope you're where you are. If not, that you can make the best of it and just stay safe, stay warm, stay cool, whatever your need is. And so uh, think about these things. The title of the lesson might be a little strange to you and uh, it's called God Laughs, Laughs with Sorrow. And so we'll have to get into the lesson for you to see what we're talking about. But it's really a lesson about how God deals with the wicked, the evil of this world, and the people who are unrighteous before him. See, there's many places in God's holy word where he tells mankind how he will deal with the wicked and the unrighteous. In Psalm 37, 13, we have a different observation which might be a little strange to any student of the Bible. Beginning verse 12, we read, The wicked plans against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. And then verse 13, The Lord laughs at him, for he sees his day is coming. Now, that, that, that really seems kind of strange coming from the Lord, that the Lord would laugh at the destiny of the wicked. But in another place we read, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? And that was recorded in Ezekiel 33 in verse 11. Now while these two verses may, might be a seeming contradiction, for it implies that God knows the judgment is coming upon the wicked, and they will be punished. Yes, they have their day coming. Yet God does not desire that any perish, but all would come to repentance and obedience to his will. You know, we read that in 2 Peter 3, 9. And so the point is that God knows everything. He really does. And those who practice wickedness do not look forward to their end. And so they're going along, but they seek only for the pleasure they can find right now. And the wicked do not see, and they do not want to see, their destiny. And so many have just kind of alleviated them problem by claiming that hell is not real and that the soul is just a myth. And so that, that's, what, that's how they get around it. They continue doing those things that God doesn't consider righteous. Now, and we can go a lot farther. I mean, there, there's things that God has told mankind he wants mankind to do. And we're taught in James 4, 17, if we don't do those things that are good, then, uh, I mean, it, we are guilty of sin. And, of course, sin separates us from God and keeps us separated from God until our sins are washed away. See, and, and continuing in, in Psalm 37, in verse 14, we read, the wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow to cast down the afflicted and the needy to slay those who are upright in conduct. I mean, we see that in our world today. <clears throat> and so, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. So there's two main reasons why the wicked are against the Lord's faithful ones. They do not like being told that their behavior is against God's will. They don't like to be told that they are wrong. They don't like to be told that they are sinning. And second, they wish to deny the existence of God, but with so many followers who are faithful, they got to find a way to defeat these people who are telling them that they are wrong. And so they must defeat the righteous any way that they can, whether it's by intimidation or whether it's by uh, coercion, whether it's by compromise or just making them shut up. I mean, that, that's, that's why they do this. And they don't like these people casting a reflection about them that makes them look bad. I mean, at, you know, Proverbs 16, 2, every man's way is right in his own eyes. I mean, he tells us that. And so people, they, they, want, they want to know they're right, but they can't stand it when someone tells them that they are wrong. So... Many wicked people take advantage of the poor and find ways to profit off of them. And when I say poor, I mean, you might, be, you might go up and steal money from a millionaire. But, I mean, if, if they're not the, the, if they have the right demeanor, then you're okay, you're going to get some money out of it. 
But uh, I, I'm thinking, you know, others. I mean, we have many business people who take advantage of the poor. I mean, there's advertisements on TV now how that uh, some classes of people have been manipulated by various companies to sell their products to them, uh, make them think it's safe when it's not. And, of course, we, we've seen this take place. We, we, we always watch the, the politicians pander. Uh, we're going to take care of you. We're going to take care of you. And then what happens? You know, the past 60 years, doesn't matter how many times they've said we're going to take care of you, have they done it? You know, a lot of people are waking up and will realize they really don't care about me. They just want to get elected. And when they do get elected, they ignore what the will of the people is and they just find ways to profit themselves. I mean, sneaking things into uh, bills that are certain to be uh, passed, I mean, they, they snuck in a raise for themselves uh, in, in this last uh, package. So, I mean, they do these things. And so it happens in politics. Pad, they just Politicians just pander to them, get their vote. And yet nothing is done in these cities. And basically on their own, but when it comes to to vote for this people, because uh, they promised they're going to take care of us. <clears throat> I mean, how long are you going to have the wool over your eyes, people? I mean, consider that. How long are you going to continue on in all this horrible stuff, all the corruption that's going on, and yet turn a blind eye to it? Well, chances are, until it affects you personally, you're not going to do a thing. So, I mean, let's just get down to it. And reality tells us that. See, God, through Jesus, tells us the destiny of man is based upon our behavior. And, and it's the condition of our heart. And just a simple claim to be a follower of God or Jesus does not make it so. It takes a lifetime commitment to be faithful and a follower of the instructions that God has given us. And it's not an easy task. You know, when, when Jesus said to find the, the narrow way, he didn't just say find it. He says, strive to enter. Now, striving in indicates that it's going to take some effort, and it really does. And if you want to find out what kind of effort we're supposed to apply to it, look up the word diligence. I mean, get a dictionary and look up the word diligence and see what that means. And then look at a concordance to see how many times diligent and diligence and diligently is used in the scriptures. And it might surprise you. Yes, this is something we've got to work for. We've got to strive for it. You know, we talked about go we're at war the other day. And guess what? Yeah, this is a battle we're in. Our souls are at stake. And so we have to strive to enter in that narrow, that narrow way. Now, later on in Psalm 37, down in verse 23, it says, the steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. So we delight in the ways of God, and when we do that, we let God guide us. You know, that's just like Proverbs 3, 6, uh, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will guide your paths. So, yeah, I mean, so we are delighted, and when people follow the Lord's way, God delights in those things. And so we are to be guided by the Lord, and we know that God will never lead us into harm or error. And his ways are good, and they are right, and they will provide the best for all those who seek and follow his ways. And we know that. And the wicked choose their own way and try to live without God. Now what's really strange is, many of these who are wicked, they seek the qualities that God teaches, yet they do not want anything to do with God. See, they want everyone to be nice to each other. Oh yeah, I mean, that's utopia. Uh, if we're all equal, then we'll, we'll all be nice to each other. There, w there won't be any stealing or anything like that. Uh, but you know what? They think they can accomplish this without God. And that's an utter failure. It's going to be a failure. And they are deceived. They choose the wrong path to follow and their ways are false and deadly. Down in verse 27 of Psalm 37, it reads, Depart from evil and do good, so you will abide forever. 
And so when we choose to do those things that are good in the sight of God, really everyone benefits. We treat people with kindness. We're not trying to manipulate them or steal from them. I mean, we're just and fair in our dealings with them. If we have a business, we're honest. And the faithful are compassionate and willing to assist others. I mean, we, we have a lot of faith-based organizations that do a whole lot more than what the government does for people. And, and so, yeah, the faithful are compassionate and willing to assist others. The wicked just want to take out. They look out for themselves and they don't care about anyone else unless they can see an advantage to it and kind of sometimes rubbing shoulders with the right people uh, it, it might help you uh, progress in, in your ambitions but over and over the Bible tells us to depart from evil and, and doing evil and seek to do good see there will be a spiritual and eternal benefit for doing so and we know that and those who choose to continue in evil will face God in judgment, unprepared, and they will face their punishment alone. There's nobody going to be back there to support them. There's going to be nobody at their back, and they're going to be alone. And where they think they have a bunch of buddies, well, what happens when the money runs out? We, we've seen so many stories of that. Someone flashes money around, got lots of friends. All of a sudden, the money disappears, and what happens? Well... The prodigal son found that out. Once the money was gone, nobody was there. <clears throat> nobody gave him shelter or any food or anything. And so he was out there sleeping with the pigs and eating their food. When he realized even his father's servants had it better than he did. Sometimes it takes getting down to the very bottom for a wake-up call. But we can warn people now so that they don't have to get to that point. And so seek to serve the Lord and do his will and the benefits will be great and it'll be wonderful far far greater than anything any human being can imagine we'll be in heaven with god and jesus and it'll be a wonderful existence and some of us are prepared for it we're looking forward to it others you're not quite prepared so you need to get busy and serve the lord the bible tells you how just follow the Bible and you can't go wrong. So keep these thoughts in mind. That's our lesson. Uh, I encourage all of you to do something for God today. I mean, post a passage of scripture on your Facebook page and share that with your friends. Um, put some, Maybe get an article that you, you've read that uh, has some meaning for you and share it with others. I mean, there, there's a lot of these on Facebook. We, we get messages and notes from different people all the time and if you have a lot of Christian friends you're going to get things about serving God and Christ that will benefit people's souls share those on on Facebook it doesn't take much effort at all it's just to hit that share button and post to your timeline and you don't know I mean maybe you might influence some of your supposed friends to start thinking about God and leading them. We are supposed to be lights in this generation, this evil generation, and we're supposed to be lights to the world. Paul told the Philippians to shine as lights in this generation. And, and so, folk, do something for God, please. I mean, you, you're going to benefit from it. And we have the passage in Hebrews where God does pay attention. God's not going to forget the things you've done to try and help others get to heaven. And, and so, I mean, that, that's one way to store up treasure for yourself. That's one way of thinking about it. You store up treasure whenever you try and encourage people to follow God. God sees that, and you'll be rewarded for that in the end. So consider those thoughts, and uh, Lord willing, we'll be back here again with another lesson tomorrow. All right, have a good day now. <clears throat>